Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of the ancient Spartans. What many of you may not know is that the Spartans were of Dorian Indo-European descent and likely had more steppe or Indo-European ancestry compared to the Athenians as well as other Hellenic populations that were primarily of indigenous early European farmer descent. In fact, the Spartans will be shown here to have significant amounts of steppe or Indo-European answers. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. Up first, we have the symbol which represented ancient Sparta and this symbol was likely a part of their shields and flags. Moving on, here is an image of the Dorian as well as other Hellenic migrations and you can see that the Dorians came from northern Greece and for this reason they likely had a lot of steppe or Indo-European ancestry and then you can see their dispersal across southern and central Greece and also the Aeolians as well as the Ionians who were the ancestors of the Athenians are shown here as well so you can see that their migrations are listed also and what this means is that these sorts of migrations were not restricted to one ancient Hellenic group and was a pan-Hellenic phenomenon. And again, you can see that the Dorians, who were the ancestors of the Spartans, were very much entrenched within central and southern Greek, particularly the Peloponnese, as mentioned. And this shows that the Dorian migrations were widespread across the Greek peninsula. Now, here is a modern imagination of the Spartans, and in the center is the king of Sparta who fought against the Persians Leonidas and you can see that he is completely nude though keep in mind that this was not a tradition of the Spartans and this is idealized but nonetheless again you can get a very nice idea of what the Spartans look like and they had a very European phenotype based on this reconstruction and this is corroborated by their DNA. Though again keep in mind that this is a modern depiction and we have very little depictions of the Spartans themselves that have survived to the present day. It is a well-known fact that many ancient Spartans were blonde and I think this had to do with their significant steppe ancestry as well as lack of Levantine as well as Iranian farmer ancestry. Keep in mind that nonetheless the Spartans were very distinct from modern day Central and Northern European populations. One of the interesting aspects of Spartan history is that they were at odds with the Athenians for nearly 200 years and you can see that Sparta's influence was mostly restricted to the Peloponnese whereas Athens was an empire that stretched across the Greek peninsula as well as parts of Anatolia and Thrace. But as you can see with this map, the Athenians initially had the advantage though the Spartans would become victorious in their battles, particularly during the Peloponnesian War and would come to dominate Athens for nearly 50 years. Now we don't have any Athenian samples, though I feel that they had much less steppe ancestry and more Neolithic European ancestry compared to the Spartans. Moving on, here is a modern statue of an ancient Spartan and you can see that he's holding a shield and has a very decorative helmet and this is very interesting and this shows how much the Greeks have invested in their ancient Spartan heritage which is quite interesting. Though unfortunately modern day Greek populations are very distinct from the ancient Hellenes and have additional Slavic as well as Levantine ancestry. Nonetheless, the heritage of the ancient Greeks still belongs to the modern day Greek people. Up next, I will be taking a look at the ancestral heritage of the Spartans as well as presenting the study that was released recently on the matter. Now the study in question was titled, Ancient DNA Reveals Admixture History and Endogamy in the Prehistoric Aegean. And as you can see, this study was released a year ago on January 16, 2023. Now to present the map that was featured in the study, here it is and you can see that these are the sites from which the samples were taken from and they're across Greece and the samples I'll be taking a look at are from Migdalia. I will not be taking a look at the other samples since they have a much more Mycenaean-like genetic profile and are not that close to the Spartan samples from Migdalia from the late Bronze Age. Moving on. Here is uh, the PCA that was featured in this study and you can see that the majority of the Greeks cluster with modern day populations of southern Europe and are in between near Easterners and modern day Europeans. 
Thus, as you can see from this PCA, the ancient Greeks were a population that was intermediate between the ancient Anatolian populations as well as populations of the Levant and the Europeans, which is quite interesting, though they nonetheless had very little ancestry derived from a Levantine or even a Caucasian source and were mostly just descended from early European farmers with only minor amounts of Caucasian hunter-gatherer and steppe ancestry. Now before I get into the results, I just like to share the source populations. As you can clearly see, there's a Neolithic Greece component, there's a Steppe Yamnayan component, there's a Western hunter-gatherer component, there's a Neolithic Iranian component, there's a Caucasian hunter-gatherer component, and there's a Neolithic Levantine component. As mentioned, these sources will be utilized to assess the amount of ancestry that the ancient Spartans had from each of these populations. Now before I get into the individual samples, here are the results for the averages. So you can see that the sample set was on average 70.4% Neolithic Greece derived, 28.8% Yamnayan derived and 0.8% Neolithic Levantine. As you can see the ancient Spartans were primarily of Neolithic Greece descent. Despite this however, they had around 30% ancestry deriving from a steppe source. What this means is that the Dorian migration was indeed mediated with the invasion of steppe-like peoples who mixed with the indigenous population of Greece. Now finally, here are the individual samples and you can see there on average 69.0% Neolithic Greece, 28.4% Steppium 9, 0.4% Western hunter-gatherer, 0.4% Neolithic Iranian, 1.0% Caucasian hunter-gatherer and 0.8% Neolithic Levantine. Thus, with these results, you can see a bit of variance in these ancient Spartans. What this means is that on a genetic level, there was distinctions within the Spartiate population. And especially, you can see one of the samples had around 36% steppe ancestry and 64% Neolithic Greece ancestry with no Western hunter-gatherer, no Neolithic Iranian, no Caucasian hunter-gatherer, and no Neolithic Levantine ancestry. This aspect suggests that there existed a caste system amongst the ancient Spartan population with those being authentic Spartans likely having more Yamnayan ancestry than those being slaves. Thus, while the ancient Spartan population was likely very similar and not a part of the Nordic uh, Mediterranean uh, Klein, nonetheless there were distinctions within the Spartan community as you can see here and what this means is that while the elite Spartans may not have genetically been Northern Europeans or even Central Europeans, they nonetheless had a profile with more steppe ancestry compared to the indigenous peoples living there who also had some ancestry from the steppe though not as high as the authentic Spartans. This is especially crucial to understanding the relationship between the elite Spartans and their Maniot slaves. To conclude, this analysis took a look at the history of the Spartans as well as their genetic origins based on a recent study that was released. As you saw, the Spartans were of Mediterranean genetic stock, though they had no foreign ancestry as modern Greeks do. By this, I am of course referring to the Neolithic Iranian, the Caucasian hunter-gatherer and the Neolithic Levantine ancestry. That's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.